Good gracious evening, everybody. I'm uh, really excited to be here for my third ever podcast. I think I'm actually going to change the name of the podcast to something like J- Jolly Gums or Jolly. I like the word Jolly, and I think it is quite it's quite um, it's quite a harmless word. It just it seems to have pure happiness, which of course isn't what I am. And I don't mean to be misleading. If, if I wanted to be misleading, I probably would have gone into politics just for for an example. Uh, but here I am now, and uh, so something jolly, I'm not sure. Um, and we're going to have this new little um, uh, uh, frame to the podcast now. So every five minutes, I'm going to um, say like a little quip that I thought of during the week. So I've got my little notebook here, and it's got it's got funny phrases in the back, which I've written. Um, they may not all be hugely um original like you may not think that they're all groundbreaking but they come from my mind and maybe we'll just, we'll just have have a bit of fun have a bit of fun every five minutes so unfortunately right now we're 0.2 times 0.2 times yeah we're 0.2 times into how far we need to be uh to get the first one uh but there could be a little phrase could be a joke it could be absolutely anything uh but yeah we're here again it's really exciting I'm uh, it's all it's all a lot going on. I've got exams next week, but I I thought I've even got an exam tomorrow. But I thought I'd t- take the time to do this because that's what joy and love and Bob Marley's favourite words are all about. I've uh, never actually met Bob Marley. He um, although he me and him have similar roots, we are uh, slightly different. You, you know that whole you know there's the the idea of time. We weren't quite there at the same place. We weren't there at the same time. Which is kind of strange to think about, really, because he was there and I was there, but we just never really saw each other, even though we were in the same place. Um, yeah, I was I mean, really it's an interesting thing about time, uh, which is was the is the idea um, kind of it was in this book called Chaos that I'm reading, and it's about uh, does time? It's not it, it's not like a question. It's it's just some thoughts that this guy was having. It's about does time kind of go completely smoothly? Does it because it travel? Does it? Uh, exists smoothly or is it in discrete kind of uh, periods of time so I guess maybe if you're looking at minutes like or imagine if clock hands didn't tick they just kind of swept around the whole time it's that kind of idea but obviously a sweep the kind of micro movements will probably be kind of judders to an extent anyway I understand Rolexes glide Uh, maybe Rolexes have defied time or maybe they're the only true thing to time or we're completely wrong in both ways and there's a new watch company. That's sort of how it is. Not sure. Not really sure. Uh, but yeah, we, we've got my glass of water here. We're on our way to my first little quip. Funny phrases. Uh, that's what I've titled them. Some people would probably call them a joke. Maybe we'll get on to j- 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 Jolly Jests or something. If the name of the podcast would be j- j- Jolly Anything. Jolly Jests. My speech impediment, aka stutter, uh, has 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 hit the rebound of my childhood years of bullying and has decided it wants to return which is fine um because uh because now teachers mock me because they don't realize i've had a stutter because i it had been gone for about 10 years uh which is kind of weird um but they will apologetic about it afterwards which always makes me feel like at least a pass has been put over the gaping wound of failure in conducting a simple conversation um such as i did Business B Tech turns into I did b- 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 business B Tech. Uh, obviously, business B Tech isn't the ideal phrase I want to be saying with a stutter, especially on the word letter B. Uh, for example, bull is my hardest word, and I'll tell you something that pause that I can see because there's a lack of waves uh, was me looking like an idiot uh, trying to say the B. Um, what do I what do I look like? Imagine. Uh, I kind of lean forward, like I'm, I'm, instead of air coming out my mouth, so there's still like a conservation of momentum. So instead of uh, uh, mouth mouth noise coming out my face, I kind of move my face forward to make up for it. Uh, I'm not sure. Strange. Uh, yeah, I've got to revise sociocultural PE. In fact, I could talk about sociocultural PE. Actually, no, we won't. That's boring. As I found it, we've got another twenty seconds until our first joke. Oh man, I've done all sorts of things. I've been applying to people's podcasts because now I've got the idea that I've got my own independent podcast and they find that quite interesting because I'm also quite young so it shows that I've got a sense of knack, um, a sense of doing things. Uh, He hasn't got back to me. (laughs) (laughs) Granted, I haven't been that successful. Uh, But it's all about the attempt. Anyway, here we are. First five minutes.
Let's, let's, give, let's have a look at I don't want this to be underwhelming because this is the first one ever. Uh, what we got? So we got our book here. Um, so let's say you're doing something very difficult. Let's say I went into the career of business accounting at the University of Brunel and I was guaranteed a cubicle in West London. That would be like rolling a square up a hill. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. You know, it wouldn't work for me. I'm the square, I'm on the hill. It's not my environment, I don't roll. Okay, I, 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 I sit in my uh, room telling stories about my inability to roll to a microphone. That's what I do. Um, yeah, so the actual phrase is trying to roll a square up a hill. So this could be some kind of proverb. Ah, Mr. Mr. Basketball Player, you want to make um, little tea sets for children? You're trying to roll a square up a hill. Your hands are way too big. The spoon will give you difficulty as you need to carve out a spoon with something small and you've got big hands. That, 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 I mean, I've explained that quite thoroughly. Uh, I'm, assure, I've, I'm, I'm sure it didn't go over your head originally. Um, it's quite a simple idea. And there we are. Um, so that's the first one. All sorts, all sorts. Uh, I've predicted myself A star AA. And I've got, I've got actually quite an interesting piece of paper. I've got an interesting piece of paper and it says all my... Um, this is actually really, I need to be funny. Uh, it, it, it's got my sheets of paper and it's got it's got my little things that I want to achieve. So it's got A star A in my A levels and I've got all these little notes about comedy and career and just like little little things here and there. I'll, I'll tell you one of my, um, my career. I like to get to a point in my career when people say that I've been an overnight success because that shows a sense of, well, it kind of shows a sense of the world only from one perspective. Because you've woken up and it's the first time you see me, but I've been waking up constantly for the last fifteen years doing this, so it's it's only from your perspective, uh, which kind of links to what what I call, I don't know what I call, uh, but you know, just a general sense of I think humans are really really selfish, and which is obviously what people think. But I think a lot of our issues come from people. Uh, we try to hide the fact that we're very selfish. So instead of let's say we give the diet situation a thought, the um. Instead of thinking, yeah, I'm just a selfish human being. I enjoy meat. It feels good for me. It, you know, not. I mean, I'm not saying Burger King, but I'm saying meat. It feels good, and um, I I enjoy eating it. I enjoy the social aspect of eating it at Christmas, etc., etc. Realistically, I just like eating meat, and obviously, there's ethics which are deniable because they're ethics, um, and are kind of subjective. Object? No, yeah, subjective. Um, but we often dance off the. We often dance around selfishness and pretend there's other reasons for it, um, which I think is a lot more important. You would own up to your selfishness, because then you can, uh, once you've owned up to something, you can be aware of it. Once you're aware of it, you can try and control it, try and reduce it, try and see when it's beneficial and when it's not. Um, for example, it's important to be selfish with your career, with your with your relationship, with 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 the woman you love. Because then you, you spend time with people you enjoy, and with the people you enjoy, you tend to have a more happy state of mind. I was turning it to Russell Brand a bit here. It's a bit tragic. Uh, yeah, it's really sad. I, I, I'm I inter interested in Russell Brand, but I, I think if I ever get success, I'm going to be a, a stand-up. I'm not going to be a 45-year-old man doing little chats with my beard and low-cut t-shirts with my wife exercising on the exercise bike that I paid for in the background. Maybe she's bought it, actually. I don't know. It's not not really my thing. Not my thing. Personally, oh, we got sketches coming out. I'm really excited about that. Me and my friend Nolan have been working on sketch. So, <laughs> so we have these characters which are like uh, kind of. We got one who's really oh dear, come on man. Mm. So we just go McDonald's. Yeah, Uber Eats. Uber Eats. Okay, Uber Eats. Can we get Uber? No, what? There's no Ubers in Sheffield. What? Kind of like um, rather lazy man, rather rather hefty lad. He he he's called Harvey Lardman, and he shifts shunts across the room with significant heft. Shunts across the room with significant heft. Heft is how I would describe him. He's a simple man. He likes eating and he likes sitting down. Loves wheelchairs and drive throughs He combines the two and goes through drive throughs on his wheelchair. Um, he's, we're not. Well, he's not actually disabled. It's not. It's quite importantly not part of the character because I don't. It's not really. Doesn't add anything. Um, I guess there's kind of some similarities to Little Britain there, but you've got to be inspired by something. I need to stop muttering. I need to. I, 
I don't know how sensitive this is. Also, I've changed it to mono because before I think I was having like an ASMR setup, <laughs> except you were just kind of getting like the ASMR, the 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 movement, the motion of the, where the sounds coming. The change, uh, I guess, uh, changes where the sounds coming from. With just a flat picture of me on a train coming back from France in the backdrop. Quite a nice picture though, I must say. Oh, it's ten minutes. Oh, okay. I'm actually going to get a little jangle, a little one before each little quip as well, because I think it'd be nice to implement. Um, Okay, what should we go for? Um, um, so my second one is, I mean, it's very similar. I'll change it a bit. Uh, okay. Uh, how did the telephone telephone about telephones? That's my my second quip or funny phrase. FP. Jesty, what was it? Zesty testies, <laughs> zesty testies. That's it. I'm gonna call them zesty testies. Another zesty testy. That's clever as well because it could be testy as in like testing the joke or testing the idea. Zesty testies. That's what these are. Uh, thank you. You were here when I thought of that, or you weren't here and you heard it in the future when I'm a hugely successful man with with, with lots of people laughing at me. Zesty testies, and that's with a Y, not an ES, because that's immature, and I'm not. I'm very immature. Um. So my second zesty, oh yeah, how did the telephone telephone about telephone? So it's the idea that there was the original telephone, no, there was the original phone which was static, and then it had to tell the mobile telephone, the telephone, about telephones. So how did, oh no, how did the telephone, the modern telephone, tell the old phone about the new telephones? So it's, how did the telephone tell a phone about telephones? Thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, that's my second bit of genius, bit of wordplay, bit of a uh, cognitive... Testing. Good all sorts in this book. Anyway, 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 anyway. Zesty testy number two of my life. Man, I hope I get to go on this guy's podcast. It'd be so sick. I just get to talk to him about things and and uh, enjoy his company and enjoy mine. Maybe entertain a couple of people. That's all I really want to do is just entertain people. Um, because I think I think it's quite nice. I just really enjoyed when when I, when, when I hear something, it just makes me laugh. It just makes my it makes me really happy. Makes me really happy, yes. For God's sake, man. Four. What are we going to do? I'm trying to... Maybe I should make these 20 minutes long when I'm in a bit of a funny mood. It's just a bit of stress at the moment. But there's no reason. There's no never any excuses. That's what I need to... Maybe I should angle this up a little bit. Never any excuses. Yeah, I think that's better. Whoa. Okay, that works. Yeah, I was just doing a bit of simple harmonic motion with my head there. That's probably a pain. That's probably to think you got a B around you. Either a B or an idiot saying E non-stop to try and see where the sound levels are. Uh, probably both. If that both, that'd be really scary. Because then if... Ooh, if you had a B on the opposite side of me... Sounds like a love song. The B on the opposite side... Maybe it's like a... Uh, the B is his girlfriend and he's on the other side of him. So yeah, it's like a, a, a dual a duality of man conflict between himself and his loved one. Could be a woman. Could be a man. I don't know. I disclose which gender they were. May man and man and woman. Is that a sex? No, I think male and female is sex. And then there's this um, the idea of gender, whether it be discrete or whether it be continuous. Is I don't think you can really debate it because you're talking about something which isn't. You know, you. Can, I, okay, I almost sound really ignorant. I don't see how you can debate it because it's not actually there. So how you like if I've got a different idea of what gender is to the person I'm debating, I can't convince them because it doesn't affect their life at all. Maybe I'm going to be really dumb. I'm trying to convince you that there are infinite genders, but you don't think there are infinite genders. So I can't convince you of that because I can't really show you. I can just say my friend's got no cock or no vagina and wants to be called. Um, a certain Z he Dumbledee dropped an egg down the hill. Oops, it's Humpty Dumpty, kind of name. Oh, it's tough. It's really, really complex. Really complex issue, which I think should be ha dealt with. I don't think it should be dealt with. I think it should just it should all exist on its own. So if you personally have an issue with with uh, if you're having difficulties with your gender, then I think that it should be a relationship that you have with the people around you. 
and rather than it having to be a legal statement and there has to be kind of um official legislation in place to deal with um maybe your lack your your, your not lack i don't use the word lack your to get like a you're trying to you've got something which is very spectrumy in your opinion and you're trying to quantify it and i think when when you've got something which is like you're not sure where you are it's very hard to say where you are and then how that affects people can treat you because you're saying that you're this but you're saying there's a spectrum and they can't treat you like that because you're that but there's a spectrum yeah thanks um last last little jest last little zesty testy of the day free one for your podcast that's fine it'll b- b- uh, boost my writing Sir, you're wearing a diamond hat in a dark room. It doesn't matter. Um, Is my little funny phrase. Uh, So, for example, diamonds, the whole point of diamonds is that light reflects off them and it looks really pretty. But, if you're wearing one in a dark room, we're in this case dark, we're assuming there is an absence of light completely, then no one knows you've got a diamond hat on. So the worth that you have is useless. For example, if a dinner lady wanted to get into um aeronautical engineering she's got a diamond hat in a dark room except she's got a spatula in an engineer's lab do you get it anyway thank you everybody i love you all and i'll love to see you next week goodbye